Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. And uh, I'm going to present, uh, present uh, the work of the investigation of the human device interactions while predicting uh, simulations is part of my PhD thesis. And this thesis I take um, at the Lisift laboratory in France. And uh, we also have a collaborations with the uh, Prism lab, Labs and also the NPU universities in China. And <clears throat> now the first time I will introduce the, our backgrounds. We want to study the interactions between the human and the mobility at the devices. First, uh, the devices, just like the, you can wear a lot of the exoskeletons, they can use the uh, and the engineering use and uh, used in mechanic medical regions. And our use is time uh, have already developed in that lab is a part of the medical use. And what what, what we think that the exoskeletons are just like the human mobility act it provide a direct assistance for the users. It, uh, by apply the force, apply on the particular points, and also to apply the torques appended at the joint. And these two elements, we can regard it as the dynamic behaviors to modify the dynamic behaviors of the human actuators. <laughs> and uh, we start this interaction because uh, we want to acknowledge the three benefits. The first benefits we can monitor the bell feedbacks, such as the muscle activity signals describing the muscle activities. And also depend on this uh, feedback, we can achieve the voluntary controls. But uh, this is we can develop the further. And uh, now I, my works is uh, to design uh, augmented uh, devices the two just uh, to better the designing process of the devices uh, such, such as the exoskeletons. And uh, we, based on this method, we proposed our method. Our first method is to use the biomechanical studies of the human subject. And after we will use the uh, simulations and the modeling technologies after we can compare our simulated result with the uh, experimental data. <laughs> and uh, we just uh, talk about our, my background to study this uh, field. And then next, uh, I will introduce the, my method of the investigations. First, uh, I will give some basic technologies about uh, our method. Uh, the first uh, technology is that we used uh, biomechanical studies, as we talked about before. And this biomechanical studies, we used the neural muscular skeleton modeling of the human subject. It can be a subfield of the biomechanics because it can better illustrate the biological structures as well as the fourth generations. And like that, it's a uh, general multi-body structures, this method can provide the, the muscle activities, can describe the muscle activities during the simulations. And then the second one is what we call simulations. It can describe the, the mechanics underlying the physical interactive phenomena, and also we can achieve some predictions in the, what we call the answer the what if problem. Here is a, a schematic diagram of the MS. First, we will build a neural command and send out the electrical impulse. And the electrical impulse to go to, go to send it into the muscles. And with the musculoskeletal dynamics, we can get the muscle force and consider the biological structures. We can get a series of the moment applied on the relative the joint of the human body and use the forward dynamics we can 
reduce the, the relative the accelerations of the human segments. And after uh, integration of these accelerations, we can get a series of the kinetics uh, trajectories. And this kinetic trajectories, we have two use. One use is to think back to the multi-body dynamics. And this multi-body dynamics, this time we use the four inverse dynamics to calculate the, uh, another group of the moments. And we can compare these two moments and to verify that our kinetics is reasonable or not. And for the second use, we can send this the kinetics to direct it to the controllers and to after modify the, the electrical impulse to in order to achieve the uh, closed loop control. Uh, and uh, first, about uh, after its uh, procedures, uh, first I will introduce the uh, NMS the models. The NMS models can come consist of three parts. The first part is the ground and uh, it's built And uh, the second part is a musculoskeletal model. The third part is the uh, actuator components, what we call the muscle hair. And uh, normally this, two, this system can wield two main components. The first component is the we call the bodies and the second one is the we call the joints. We normally the ground is also a part of the bodies, and the, the ground, the, in this case, we embody the head, necks, and the torso instead of the ground. And also, the <clears throat> ground is connected to the arm by a shoulder joint, as well as the forearm is connected by the arm, while the elbow joint. These two joints is show as a blue. Uh, blue, blue geometry of this picture. And all of these two joints are actuated by the muscles. Uh, after we have the uh, IMS models, we can achieve the simulations. Uh, depending on the different uh, inputs, the state or the initial state, we can have the two kind of the simulations. The first one, we call it the data trackings. If we have the experimental kinematics and also measured force, and we send it into the simulation algorithms, we can get uh, our simulated results, simulated kinematics and forces, variables are measurable and the neural signals. And uh, if the initial state is a uh, uh, prescribed uh, motions, it just uh, come from a set of the constraints, we call it the predictions because it depends not on the experimental data at first. But after, if we have the simulated data, we can first make this comparison between the neural signals and the EMG signals. And after the simulated kinematics and force can also be compared with the experimental data at the initial state here. And uh, after this comparisons, we have the we can see that our models and our simulation has been validated, and we can deduce the something that cannot be directly measured in the experiment. Just the first one is the muscle forces, and the next one is the muscle contributions, metric contributions. For example, it's the uh, muscle coordination effects to the center of mass. The center of mass could be the human whole body and could be a particular segment of the human. Uh, on the first, uh, this one, after we say that we need a, a software to implement uh, all of these modeling procedures and the uh, simulation procedures. And this software, we choose the, the OpenSIM software is a platform for modeling and simulating the neural musculoskeletal system. It has some features and shortcomings that uh, what attract us most is uh, it can simulate the muscle contraction precise. After this muscle contraction process, we can have the muscle forces. 
and after the second is the muscle coordination in vaccines. And this time it's just some information about the open scene, the dynamic situations of the system. The first two we call it the multi-body dynamics. It's just like the normal multi-body systems. And the second two equations in a way, what we call the musculoskeletal dynamics. It's uh, to calculate the mass activities. And uh, for the next step, our method, we developed some method because the, before it's uh, some basics and uh, some selections and uh, for the after it's uh, what we have developed. The first thing is uh, we developed our human exoskeleton systems. We adapted the two components, the device the zero one and device zero two, and connected by the revolute joint. And we used these three components as an exoskelet. And the, the device zero one is connected by the arm, by the wheel joint, the same as the device zero two. And then usually the exoskeleton want to pull provide the mobility aids to the humans. And this diagram, it can be shown that uh, there is an aid from the revolutory joint to the elbow joint. And as we talked before, we named the, all the weld joint and release aid as interactions between the human and the exoskeleton system. And this one it, uh, can be the basic uh, simulations of the open scene, but also we can get from the motion capture system and also for sensors to have the experimental data based simulations. And the results can be comparisons with the simulated results and the experimental data. And all of these two results can also be compared with the predictive result. So after, <clears throat> We will compare the, the group of the results have uh, three res resources. One is uh, data tracking simulations, one is uh, prediction simulations, and uh, the last one is uh, experimental data. And for the, exper and for the predict simulations, we use the optimal control techniques to solve this problem. These control problems can be presented as uh, Find a state and uh, controls and minimize the object functions. L. L it can be found by the users and uh, about the subject to we define a series of the constraints. The first constraints is called the dynamic constraints, is to show the dynamic characteristics of the system. And about the second and the third. It's called the boundary constraints to give the bounds to the variables. And for the last one, uh, we call it the path constraints. This path constraints to define the, what kind of the path, what kind of the kinematics trajectory we, we want to achieve. And normally we will use the numerical solutions to this problem in order to let the PC to run simulation about this problem. First, we will have the initial gas. This initial gas can be come from experimental data and can be designed by the users. And the first, we will formulation this problem, formulation the problem, and uh, trans transfer all this information to the problem discrimination process. Especially here, the first derivatives of the state is. Uh, important and we will transfer the discretis problems to the system dynamics and to calculate the system dynamics to send back this discretized the dynamics back to the problem discretinations and then back forward to the problem formulations part. This is the final state we call it the discretized the problem with the dynamic constraints. And then the first one, the problem formulations, we use the MATLAB to achieve that. 
and for calculated system dynamics, of course, because we use the OpenSIM to make the modeling and simulations, so it's uh, solutions, and uh, we also can uh, switch another solutions, another person in the future. And after we will define a uh, design API to connect these two and to execute the problem dissipating missions. So the main rules, main functions of the API is to design the discretizations. And these discretizations, we use the two scheme of the transcriptions. The first one is uh, trapezoidal transcriptions, we use the trapezoidal rules. And the next one is the hurrymeter Sim Simpson transcriptions, we use the, the relative the rules. And uh, the, after the discriminations, the two constraints, as well as the bounds of the uh, of the uh, variables have uh, these uh, forms. And in these forms, we see that the first part is uh, these values will come from the open theme, and these values we can come from the interpolation. Now I will give a case, a demo to use the elbow flexions to show that our method. And this elbow flexions, we transfer our S star into the NMS models and we define the two coordinates, alpha and beta, alpha is for the shoulder elevations and beta is for the elbow flexions. And then it's accurated by the six muscle accurators. And before we use the, these models into the simulations, we can give the some, we must give some the hypothesis. The first, we assume that all the segments of the models are the rigid and evenly distributed the mass. And the A star is readily attached on the bodies. Let's say that there is no internal dynamics between the exoskeletons and the human bodies. And for the final step, we assume that the interaction between the human subject and the H star is equal to the spring force acting at the air force. So this spring force, it can be a improvement method of the dynamical behavior of the human actuator itself. And for the simulations, we need to setting some parameters before. The first setting is the initial state and the next is the final state. <clears throat> it's defined by the users. And also we will give the definition of the spring force as a function of the elbow flexions and the stiffness of the speed of the elbow, elbow flexion. And after we define our objective functions as a minimized of the latest muscle efforts required. So this equation is a significant thing that the object function is to require the least muscle efforts. And we use the different group of simulations. We defined that uh, the, at first we defined the risk CT is zero and uh, we gave the different values of the stiffness and we found that at the 12.5, the cost functions is the smallest. And we, next uh, we gave the risk CT V with uh, several, <laughs> several parameters and we also gave the three group of the stiffness and we found that uh, uh, the viscosity will always increase the, the cost functions of these simulations. And from this, we showed the animations of the elbow flexion and plotting the curves of the values of the cost functions with respect to the stiffness and with respect to the viscosities. These uh, curves uh, have the, show the tendencies of the values showed before. And uh, for these figures, what is uh, most important and what's attract attractive us most is uh, it can show that uh, different contributions of the muscle to the specific uh, motions. 
First, the magnitude of all six muscle activations. You can see that at the stiffness 12.5, the green line, all the muscles have the very low level of the activations. And with the increasing of the viscosity, the activation is a rest. But always the, the no force is not a good choice. And even the viscosity 1.0 is not better than the no force. And finally, I will make the small conclusions and uh, for the study of our state. The conclusion that uh, first we apply the NMS techniques in human motion analysis and uh, by ex executing a series of simulations, the spring force reduced the, the muscle activations and which, which mean that a uh, proper result of the exoskeleton can reduce the uses for effort. And for the future work, first we compared with uh, our simulated data with experimental data, like I introduced before the three group of the data. And for the second, we consider the, the inner dynamics between the human subject and the devices, not the wild animal, it have the slight relative to the motions. And for the last, we will extend our motions to more complex the arm, just like the elbow elevations and also other applications. For example, the C2 stand assisted by the exoskeleton. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation, In uh, To your audience, if you have any question, please forward the question to Anna. Yeah. Uh, we have any questions. So uh, thank you very much, uh, In, for okay. your presentation.